Welcome to CBK episode 20. It's Pastor Brian's College of Biblical Knowledge. And uh, so, oh, today, uh, well, a couple days ago, last episode, it was Canada Day, and I talked about Canada and, and just how it was good for me living in Canada to get a different perspective on things. And also, one of the things I gained about living in Canada was this appreciation that I, I just... I get to, I got to be born and, and raised in America and get to live in America. Uh, growing up, I've always heard a lot of missionaries and you know stories from other countries, and it's been awesome and everything. And yet, I am so grateful I get to live here in America. It's great. And when I was in college, I, I you know, you kind of pick up traditions and rituals. And so it was the 1980s. And every time I crossed the border, I would put in uh, in my cassette tape player in my car. Uh, I'd put in uh, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. Well, not every time, a lot of times. And uh, there were times where I just, you know, hey, let's uh, oh, we, we go down to America uh, and two hours from Medicine Hat, Alberta, we could get down to Haver, Montana. And then you could be in America. And uh, being in America and Haver, Montana wasn't all that special. But it was, it was you know, it was just something to do. And, and I, I, I am grateful I get to live here in America. I'm grateful I get to live in Sweet Home where uh, you can have a flag in your church, and it's not at all controversial to be patriotic and have a flag in your church, American flag even. And um, this is this is good stuff uh, because America really is an awesome place to live. You look at other countries. I mean, people complain about America, but there's other countries where it's rough, and we have this wonderful, rich tradition uh, in our country, uh, flawed as it is, but. There are several people that tried really hard, uh, and uh, they should be uh, celebrated uh, during this Independence Day weekend. And um, yet, this year, 2020, has been a rough year. You know this. I don't need to go through how this is difficult. And this coronavirus thing just keeps going on and on and on. Uh, we've had unrest in our country. And um, I keep coming back to the Old Testament prophets. And so today I'm just going to look briefly at the, the Old Testament prophet of Joel. Uh, I went to uh, school uh, at Corbin uh, with a guy, and his name is Joel. And so uh, he pronounces it Joel, even though we, we think of it as Joel. And, and the more I think about it, the Hebrew pronunciation is probably Joel. Uh, but anyway, we've got Joel, and, and the prophet Joel, we don't know a lot about him. He just has a nice short little book, three chapters, and he talks about this coming invasion of locusts. And this invasion of locusts, it, it, you know, you, it makes you wonder, is this an actual invasion of locusts or more of a figurative invasion of an enemy army? Either way, it's bad stuff. And you get the idea of just wave after wave of destruction taking place in their country. And, and as I read through the first chapter, chapter, uh, chapter and a half of Joel, you, you get this sense of, yeah, this is kind of how it feels. Uh, there's this, oh, the phrase that got used the other day was uh, COVID fatigue, where, yeah, we're just getting tired of this. And, and this wave after wave of locusts being sent upon God's people. They were God's people. We like to think of God bless America and we're God's people. You know, the Israelites, they really were God's people. They were God's chosen people. Yet bad things happened to them because they had turned from God. And in Joel, we have all the locusts coming and all of that and this invading army. And then we get to, down to Joel chapter 2, and it says in verse 12, This is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is still time. Give me your hearts. 
Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing and your grief, but tear your hearts instead. <sighs> There's all these things that we're supposed to be doing and wear a mask and stuff like that. But what is more important, though, is we need to turn to God now. While there is still time, that, that emphasizes that there's kind of a clock ticking on this returning to God. And don't delay that. We need to turn to God now. And God says, give me your hearts. He says, don't tear your clothing with grief. Don't, don't, don't just show these outward going through the motions of, hey, look at me. I'm turning to God. He says, no, 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 no. Tear, don't tear your clothes. That's something they would do to show that they were really sorry for their sin and they really were turning to God. And God says, don't tear your clothes, tear your hearts instead. That's what's important. Return to the Lord your God. And why would we do that? Because he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, filled with unfailing love. He's eager to relent and not punish. Who knows? Perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord as before. We're called to return to God. And I'm not really into all these end times predictions and all of that and, and what this means and, and revelation and how all this fits in. I, I don't, I, honestly, I really don't know. And I think the people that say they do know are kind of guessing anyway. But I do know that there are times where God sends difficulty to us to try to get our attention so that we can turn to him. There's been a lot of difficulty going on in our country the last six months. And yet, I don't see a huge revival taking place. I don't see massive amounts of people returning to God. And that's exactly what we need. Return to God. That's the only thing that's going to save us. Oh, there is nothing that they're going to do uh, in Washington, D.C. that's going to fix this. Uh, oh, there was, uh, what was the phrase I heard a few years ago? Our hope for this world is not to be found in the White House, the courthouse, the schoolhouse. It's to be found in God's house. God says, return to me. And when we look at this world and we're getting just kind of a little bit stressed, just watching all of this chaos unfolding. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of good news. We need to turn to God. God will bless us. God is waiting for us to return to him. And let me pray for you and pray for our country here during this Independence Day weekend. I am grateful we get to live in America, but I also know that uh, we need to turn to God. Dear Lord, I thank you for this Independence Day weekend. Lord, I thank you for uh, 4th of July and those that signed that Declaration of Independence many years ago and saying that they wanted to be free people and free to worship you however they pleased. And Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to live up to the promises in the Declaration of Independence, so life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Lord, help us to be your people that we would return to you. In the midst of such difficult times, so many people are just keeping their heads down and just trying to grit their teeth and endure it and get through. But Lord, I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit, that we could turn to you. We desperately need you. Lord, bless this country. We sing the song, God Bless America, but Lord, we, we pray that that would be more than words, that it would be true, 
that you would bless America. In Jesus' name, amen.